There's another dynamic subdivision I want to talk about real quick. So let's go ahead and grab a PolyMesh 3D, drag it out on our canvas, go into edit mode, and then go down here to initialize and hit Q cube, turn on polyframe. And I suppose we can go ahead and hit X to go across X symmetry here. We're going to hover over a face with BZM, our Z modeler brush selected. And of course we can Q mesh, polygroup all, and start Q meshing this out into whatever shape we want. Now if you keep things nice and boxy, there's another option you can use. You can go over here to Geometry, Dynamic Subdiv. And of course when you see, uh, when you turn Dynamic on, and of course that's D and Shift D, so Shift D turns it off, D turns it back on. If you get this pop-up, you can say always yes. And I, I think that pop-up is put in there, uh, in previous versions of ZBrush there wasn't a little pop-up mission saying that. And what could happen sometimes is you would have an object, say you're using Dynamesh or Sculptures Pro and sculpting, people would accidentally hit D. In fact, let's do this. Let's hit the comma key real quick. Go to your tool, grab that demo head, and then hit delete lower. So now we have, you can see up here in the active points, there's 57,000 active points here. If you hit the D key, that'll give you a preview of what it would look like if it was subdivided even more than that. But if you try and go and sculpt on this, let's say we go to our clay brush here, and you try and sculpt, see how much lag there is? It's like, oh my gosh, let's go to our standard brush. We're trying to sculpt, but it's just like real, and it's not the lazy mouse. You can toggle that off with L, and you're going to see there's just a lot of lag. If you do Shift D, you're going to see that's going to turn dynamic off, and now it'll be a lot more responsive. So ZBrush is trying to preview a very high resolution mesh, but while you're trying to sculpt on it, it's having to do a lot of geometry preview to, preview to make that happen. So word of warning, if you're ever using ZBrush and it, you're getting really bad performance on your brushes, check and see that you have dynamic turned off, and that's Shift D to turn that off. So back to our poly mesh here. You can see as we as we hit dynamic, the default is to have smooth subdivisions turned on. And we still have creases involved here. So you can do, you know, say crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. So we're getting a nice smooth result. And then we can just run a crease tolerance and crease those edges. So now when we turn polyframe off here, we're getting this result. Now, like I was saying before, there's another option you can do. There's dynamic, there's Q grid and there's flat subdiv. Flat subdiv we've talked about before. So let's go ahead and take smooth subdiv down to zero. So now there's dynamics turned on, but nothing else is turned on. Q grid, flat subdiv, and smooth subdiv are all at zero. So there's nothing really dynamically happening here. If we turn up flat subdiv, say to one or two, you're not gonna see much happen. In fact, even if we go to uncrease all, not much is gonna happen to your surface because flat subdiv is the same thing as going up here to divide and turning that smooth modifier off. So it's dividing the surfaces but as a dynamic preview, you're not going to see much. If you want to see what this is doing, you can go up here to dynamic, and right next to there is a button called apply. So now you can see we have real subdivision levels here. If you turn off your polyframe and then turn it on again, you'll see that just kind of jogs polyframe into showing you more geometry. In fact, if we go down to subdivision level one, turn polyframe off, turn it back on, and then go back up to three, you're going to see it's not going to update. However, if you turn it off, turn it on again, it will. That's as designed. But you can see what it did was give us three subdivisions, and if we go, here's one, here's two with the faces divided, here's three with the faces divided. So you're getting re geometry subdivisions, but it's keeping it as if you had had this button turned off. There's no averaging going on. Let's go ahead and undo that. Go back to where we had no subdivisions. So now we have dynamic turned on. We're going to turn flat subdiv back down to zero. Smooth subdivision is still at zero. Let's try Q grid. So with Q grid, I'm going to turn that up to like three. And if you hover over this, you'll see this is Q grid base subdivision. If you hold down control, it'll give you a little bit more information. And essentially, this is grid style subdivision. If you want to see what it's doing here, if we hit apply, you're going to see every single division we had on our object is getting one, two, three, four, five. So five total across that edge that was there. Same thing for these middle edges as well. There's all of these. Now we can get the same result if we do uh, undo that. Hit shift D to go out of dynamic. And let's hover over this edge with our Z modeler brush, BZM. We're going to do insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and then we'll get rid of these middle ones here. We'll go ahead and leave this middle one here for the x-axis symmetry. And then we'll turn on dynamic again with Q grid set to three, and we'll hit apply. And here you see we're going to get the exact same shape. So with Q grid, you really only need these outside edges in order to have, maintain those. There's a few more options in here. Let's go ahead and undo that apply here. And you're also going to see when we hit apply, we don't have subdivision history. We can't reconstruct back because the this algorithm isn't based on taking a face and dividing it four times. It's more about putting edges to maintain your shape. So again, let's undo that. So we're back where we started. We have dynamic with Q grid set to three. So if we up this Q grid, say to seven or eight, and then hit apply, 
you can see you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ish edges to maintain those forms. So generally speaking, you only want to put your Q grid number up to however much you need to maintain this form. However, you can see there's also a coverage down here. So you say we move this up to like five, you can change this coverage now to make that bevel bigger or smaller. So the Q grid set to five and the coverage, you can balance that edge transition. And you can also mix Q grid with smooth subdivision. So if you turn on smooth subdivision of one, you're gonna see you're getting the Q grid result and you're getting a smooth subdivision on top of that. So it's essentially running a Q grid and then doing a, a divide. So if you hit apply, you're gonna see we get the Q grid result and we have one smooth subdivision history. Let's go ahead and undo that. So let's turn that smooth subdiv back down to zero. So we have Q grid set here, we have our coverage set here. And you're gonna see we have some more options. We have bevel. So if you turn bevel off, you're getting the Q grid result, but it's giving you more of a, if you hit apply, it's giving you more of a flat subdiv end result. I mean, you still can't uh, have subdivision history with this one because again, it's not dividing the faces, but you are getting those edges in here and the edges are staying sharp. So let's undo that. We'll turn bevel back on. And right next to bevel, we have chamfer. So we'll go ahead and select that one and we'll turn bevel off. So now you can see with chamfer selected, we're getting a rounded edge. So again, you can change that coverage if you want a large rounded edge. You can add more geometry to these corners. And on top of that, you can add another smooth subdivision. So if you turn off polyframe, you're gonna see this is the rounded edge result that you're getting. So if we turn polyframe back on, we go back into Z modeler brush, we hover over a face, we'll do Q mesh poly group all. We have X axis turned on with the X key. So we can just keep pulling this out. And you know what? Let's go to Q mesh a single poly. We're gonna keep this thing nice and boxy. So as we're modeling here, and again, we can still use Q-Mesh here. You can pull through if you want to get rid of these. You can Alt-Paint and pull these out. You can Alt-Paint here and pull these out. However you want to bottle the shape. And as long as these boxes or this model stays nice and boxy, you're going to see this is the, edge, this is the result that we're getting. You can do Shift-D and then D again. And just continue doing your boxy modeling until you get the shape that you want. Where this can fall apart is, say you hover over face here, and we're going to do a bridge, two polys, or I'm sorry, connected polys, circle, specified curvature of 100, specifies resolution of 8, aligned to normal triangle sides. So if we click here, you're going to see, okay, now we're going to make this a rounded edge. And we can hover over this one. We'll go ahead and delete a single poly. We'll delete this one and delete this one. Hover over this edge. We're going to bridge two holes, spline, interactive resolution, and curvature. So we can click here, click here, and then we can just add an arch here. And then if you turn off polyframe, you're going to see, well, I want these to be boxy with bevels on them, but these aren't really working for me. I want those to be nice and smooth. So what you're gonna have to do in this case is QGrid's not really gonna work for you. So I'm gonna turn QGrid down to zero and we're gonna use smooth subdivision. So we're gonna turn smooth subdivision up to like four and you're saying, well, now we're getting like goopy average vertices. Remember, you can always use your crease here. Uh, you can crease by polygroup if your polygroups are set or I tend to use this crease tolerance here. And that'll go through and crease all these. If that doesn't work or if it didn't do exactly what you wanted, like, oh, I didn't want that uncreased, you can try changing your tolerance or you can just hover over an edge and say crease edge, hold down alt and uncrease these edges here. So now if you turn off polyframe, you're going to see we have our smooth subdivision set to four, our crease level set to three. If you want to tighten up this transition right here, you can say crease level set to four, smooth subdiv set to five. There you go. So now you're getting a similar look to what you did with QGrid. Only this time you're using smooth subdivisions and your crease level to give you that result. And of course, feel free to go in here and say, you know, crease edge, you can hold down alt and uncrease these edges if you want to. Kind of look for ways to transition between surfaces. To give you whatever look you're kind of kind of looking for. And you can always, if this is too soft of a curve, always remember you can go in here with insert single edge loop and you can just dial in edges through here to tighten up these corners. But remember, if you're doing insert edge loop, it is going to start inserting edge loops through your entire object. So this edge loop, for example, when I click here to tighten up this corner, it's going all the way around my object here. You can contain this sometimes. So we'll do shift D. You can hold down control and just mask this area. Oh, what I would do is hold down control and then alt to unmask just this area. And now when you insert an edge, it'll stop right here. So then we can hit D and that'll give you your preview of what you did. And that way we can round this corner out without adding edges down here and getting unforeseen results.
Another one that comes in handy, if you want to make this a quad, you can hover over an edge and you can go delete edge. And you can go ahead and make that a quad and then back here as well. And if you want to get rid of this completely, you can try doing a collapse edge. And then you'll see it'll collapse one way or collapse another depending on where your brush position is. So if you know if you pull right, it's going to collapse up. Just keep pulling right as you collapse. And you can do collapse poly loop and see if that'll work as well. But that seems to want to be going to a lot of more, a lot more places than I want it to. So we're going to go back to collapse edge and we'll just keep pulling right. And we'll go ahead and collapse these edges. And one thing I should mention is if you're having a hard time, like say, you know what, I'm trying to select an edge but I keep deleting faces or I'm trying to select a point and I keep collapsing edges. If you're only doing, say, edge operations, you can hover over a face and you can say, do nothing. You can hover over a point and say, do nothing. And now no matter where you are, it's only gonna do edge action. So that way you don't have to be as careful to like, avoid doing a face action, only your edge actions are going to be allowed to be used.